Today we're going to talk about X-ray production. X-ray radiation is produced in X-ray emission tubes uh, by colliding electrons with the atoms in a metal. There are two types of X-rays that can be created if through this method. The first are characteristic X-rays and those X-rays are created by knocking electrons out of the shells of the atom. So here we've got the uh, atoms in the target metal. So here, the atom with the electrons orbiting in shells. It's not what it looks like really, but um, this is good, a good enough approximation to demonstrate ex how, this, how this, these X-rays are emitted. So an incoming electron, electrons that are fired at the atoms in the metal. The electron comes in and it knocks out an electron in one of the lower shells, in a shell that's low down, a lower energy level, at a lower quantum state. It comes in and it knocks it out. So here we've got the electron has knocked out, the initial electron here, has knocked out the other electron, leaving a blank space in the quantum state that needs to be filled by uh, electrons of a high energy level. And to fill that, that void, to fill that gap, one of the electrons in a higher energy level drops down to the lower energy level. And to conserve that energy, to conserve the energy, it loses, it gives off energy in the form of an X-ray. So once again, the stages, the electron comes in, knocks out an electron in a lower shell, a higher electron level, a higher, um, an electron with a higher energy level, at a higher energy level, in a higher quantum state, drops down to fill the void, and in that process, that energy level change, that change in vibration, that change in that quantum state, emits an X-ray, and it's the, the actual difference in the energy level is the amount of, is the the energy that the X-ray will have in order to satisfy uh, conservation of energy. The second type of X-ray that we can have that have uh, that can be produced is called Bremsstrahlung. Bremsstrahlung is a German word. It means breaking radiation, breaking as in slowing, breaking as in slowing down. So, in this scenario, the electron isn't stopped necessarily. The electron isn't knocked out, it doesn't interfere with any part of the, of the atom in the metal. The way this works is that the negative charge of the electron that is incoming, that is being fired towards the atom in the metal, is slowed down. It moves in a curve around the positive charge that is the nucleus of the atom. So the electron slows down and moves around, okay? And during this point, um, it's, it's being accelerated. It's being accelerated. It might not change its, its speed, but its velocity changes because its direction is being changed. And therefore, it, it's being, its velocity is changing. Its velocity is changing because it is being accelerated by this positive charge. It's having its direction, direction changed. Because its velocity is changing, because its velocity is changing, that means its energy might change. Its energy, if it does slow down, if it changes its kinetic energy at all, there needs to be some balance out, balancing out of that energy. It can't, the energy doesn't just evaporate or go, go nowhere. The energy, uh, the leftover energy from slowing it down is converted to an X-ray. Um, and as you can see, depending on how close the electron goes, how much it's slowed down by the nucleus, how much it's slowed down will depend, um, will change the energy that the X-ray will have. If it's not slowed down very much, a very, then, then a very low energy X-ray is, is um, emitted. And if it stops the electron completely, if the electron is completely stopped at the absolute other extreme, and then the X-ray will have a very high energy. So you can see there are two very different ways where X-rays can be produced uh, when, you, when you are uh, firing electrons at very, very high velocity towards a metal. So how, how are those electrons, uh, how are those electrons affecting, how do they affect the actual energy of the, of the, of the X-rays that are being given off? 
Well, if we're looking at just the characteristic x-rays, the frequency of the characteristic x-ray is determined by the change in the quantum state, the change in the energy level, uh, and it depends on the target metal often as to uh, the difference between the energy levels and what uh, the amount of energy that's given off. It'll be a, a very defined amount, though, because of the change in quantum state, the change in energy level is a, is a, is a quantified amount, it's a, a single amount. If we have a look at this diagram, this diagram shows exactly where these characteristic x-rays, the intensity of them, you can see that there, um, there's a spike, a spike at the, these two characteristic x-rays being given off. It's because these points are these two uh, defined energy levels at this amount of energy, this amount of energy um, x-ray being given off, and this particular amount of energy x-ray being given off. If we're looking at Bremsstrahlung, however, uh, it's determined by the change in kinetic energy of the electron. So the energy in needs to equal the energy out. The energy before any sort of interaction with the electron and the, and the metal needs to be the same as the energy after. So at the, if the, if the um, metal is at rest, the metal is at rest for, with relation to the electron, then the only initial energy that, that is in the system is the uh, kinetic energy of the electron. So this is the kinetic energy of the electron is equal to the initial, sorry, kinetic energy of the electron is equal to the, the final kinetic energy of the electron plus any leftover energy is emitted as the x-ray. So this is the additional um, x-ray energy that's left over from the slowing down of our, uh, our electron. The absolute maximum energy that we can get out is if this value becomes zero. So if the kinetic energy of the uh, electron becomes zero, it is stopped. It has no energy uh, left. All of the energy that it once had is converted to an x-ray. So all of that energy, that initial kinetic energy, becomes the energy of the x-ray. And it's helpful to remember that this means that for the maximum kinetic energy, the maximum, um, the maximum kinetic energy transfer this would be the maximum amount of energy. It will also be the highest frequency, the maximum frequency, and it will be the lowest wavelength, because the lowest wavelength corresponds to the largest, uh, largest energy. So in here, all the kinetic energy is converted to X-ray energy. So here on the graph, this is the Bremsstrahlung, and it's a continuum. It's not in the distinct peaks like the characteristic X-rays are, it is spread over a much larger range of wavelengths. Here, this being the minimum wavelength, the absolute smallest wavelength, that'll be the highest energy, the absolute highest energy that we can, that we can get from our collision with the electrons, uh, with the electrons uh, and the metal. So this is going to be the maximum energy, it's the minimum wavelength, the smallest wavelength. And this, the continuum will, will slow, uh, uh, will, will gradually decrease as we, as we go further and further, as, as less and less um, energy is, uh, is, is transferred to, uh, to the metal from the electron. So this corresponds to the electron being slowed down less and less. You can see that the intensity of these spikes, the characteristic X-ray spikes, is much, much larger out of the brem stralung sort of continuum. Uh, the, all that is indicating is that these particular frequency, these particular um, frequencies of X-ray are given off much more often than, than all of these other brem um, stralung frequencies, uh, individual brem stralung frequencies. That is not to say. That is not to say that these, the characteristic X-rays, will be will occur more often than Bremsstrahlung. You can see here that the area under the curve, there's a much larger area under the curve for Bremsstrahlung than there is for the characteristic X-rays. There's much more energy is going to be given off uh, as part of the. Uh, as part of Bremsstrahlung radiation, and the reason for that is it's very, it's very, well, it's relatively uncommon for the electrons to to actually strike um, another electron. It's more common that they'll be slowed down. The reason that they, we've got these particular spikes is because they're a particularly, um, they're a quantified amount, whereas here we've got a continuous amount of Brem, Bremsstrahlung radiation.
So here we've got three examples. I'm not going to read them to you, uh, but we can go through the actual uh, uh, answers for them. So for the first one, we've got an energy coming in of 75,000 electron volts. Uh, so we can convert um, our, the energy for our X-ray is equal to HF, and this is going to be the maximum frequency. The maximum amount of energy will will have uh, the maximum frequency. So frequency, the maximum frequency will be the kinetic energy that the electron has divided by Planck's constant. And I've used Planck's constant that is in the units of electron volts per second because that's the energy, the value that our energy is in. And finding that, we'll find that the maximum frequency that, uh, that uh, an X-ray could have emitted from uh, an, an electron with this amount of energy is 1.8 times 10 to the 19 hertz. This is at the upper range of the uh, of the of the X-ray um, of X-ray production. Uh, the the exponent there will often be time. It'll be times 10 to the between times 10 to the 16 and times 10 to the 19. So that's to the upper upper end, uh, the higher energy end of the uh, uh, of the X-ray uh, band here. If we have a look at substituting in H C on lambda for H F, okay, so F is going to be C on lambda. Once again, I said that there's well, there is an inverse relationship between frequency and wavelength. So the maximum frequency will be the minimum wavelength. So here, H C on lambda minimum is going to be equal to the kinetic energy of our electron. Um, so we can rearrange that here and substituting in. Uh, the electron volt seconds value for Planck's constant multiplied by the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8, divided by the 500 volt potential that we're accelerating our electron to. So therefore, this is the energy, the kinetic energy that the electron's going to have is 500 electron volts because it's being accelerated, it's an electron, and it's being accelerated across a potential of 500 volts. Plugging that in, we get uh, that there is uh, the wavelength of it is 2.5 times 10 to the negative 9 meters. So that's 2.5 nanometers uh, in for wavelength. Now for this last question, it's, uh, it's probably useful to have a look at this energy level diagram. Uh, the different energy levels here, N equals 1, 2 and 3, these are the different levels that the electrons can jump between. They can jump from uh, N equals 2 to N equals 1 and they'll give off some energy. They can jump from N equals 3 to N equals 2, they'll give off some energy. They can jump from N equals 3 to N equals 1 and give off some energy. Uh, and so if we, if we knocked out an electron in N equals 1, uh, then an electron from N equals 3 would drop down to fill that energy void. So uh, we've got here that the, the, the lowest energy levels at negative 20 kilo electron volts, um, the highest is negative 0.5 kilo electron volts. The greatest amount of energy that's going to be emitted, um, the greatest amount of energy from an electron that's going to be emitted is going to be the biggest jump it can do, the, the biggest, the jump between the um, furthest jump between the energy levels. So the greatest energy is going to be from n equals three here to n equals 1. And the difference between those energy levels is 19.5 kilo electron volts. That's the difference between the energy levels. So in A equals HF, the frequency of this, of this um, uh, is going to be E on, on H. So the E, the energy we're looking at is 19.5 times 10 to the 3. That's kilo, kilo, kilo electron volts, kilo electron volts. Um, divided by the uh, value for Planck's constant in electron volts seconds, 4.14 times 10 to the negative 15. Um, and that yields uh, a frequency of 4 times, 4.7 times 10 to the 18 hertz.